Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Death, back with another Kami Hime Project video. Now, before I get into this, something I point out with um, Genshin Impact, I'm going to have another video on that up pretty soon. It's just me trying to run through a whole bunch of the d domains, just showing off my team so far. But, um, anybody that's interested in getting into Genshin Impact, I just gotta warn you, do not pay attention to tier lists. It's not worth it. It really isn't, because of the fact that it's so biased and so much stuff that it makes no sense. Just read up on what every character does in that, read up on what every weapon does, and pay attention to what you have. If you don't have constellations, it shouldn't matter to you. So, just go off of that. But, quite frankly, the community is very, very misinformed about Genshin Impact, and it's going to be very bad about that. But, um, anyways... Getting to Kamihime Project, that's why I do these videos, because I'm trying to put the right info out there so more people can access it. But, speaking of, this event is going to be a Christmas event. I don't get why it's before December, but okay. But, um, anyways, it's the White Stolas event, so Dark is going to have the advantage. And then on top of that too, considering that it's kind of hard to build up light weapons right now, you may or may not want these. It depends on what um what grids you have access to. I do see another white bow right there, so it might go it might go in handy with the um, phoenix bows because we just recently got access to two of them, one from the All Star event, and one from um the uh, weekly advent. So it depends. But anyways, getting into it, it's a raid event, so you can get help from other players. If you are not strong enough, then simply put, just call for help or go into somebody else's raid and tap it. But even a person that started the, the game the same day as this event can still do everything if you play your cards right. Except for the solo missions, of course, because you need need to do that on your own. But there's they're just for gotcha tickets, basically. The raid gotcha tickets are helpful, but you don't need to go after them. However, if you are going after them, keep in mind it gives you a lot of access to basically plus one weapons and Adolans. It can give you some more um, copies of Adolans or weapons. It can also give you magic jewels. It can give you refill items like the half elixirs and the energy seeds. It's honestly a good time to stock up on a lot of the basic stuff you might need for a later grind, so there's that. But since it's a raid event, we go through the usual stuff. You basically do standard, then you get materials for, from that to do expert, then you get materials from expert to do Ragnarok. So, if you're trying to open your own raids, that's how that's going to go. You do apparently need to be a certain rank in order to open up these raids, but quite frankly, the ranking is so low for that, it doesn't really matter. I don't even know why it's so low. But going into the fights themselves. This first fight, the interesting thing is that the enemy is water-based, so Thunder is going to have the advantage on this one, not Dark. Also, if you've done the DWU Evan event that we had, it was um, a crossover event a while back, if you've done that, then you're pretty familiar with how this fight's going to work. But, anyways... What this boss will do is put a buff on himself, and it will make their special behavior go based off of that. Now, I don't know if it's like the Expert or um, Ragnarok versions of the fight where that buff will actually up their normal attack damage, but you still gotta be careful of it either way. So if you aren't instantly killing this boss, you could struggle a little bit with this fight. It's just the fact that You'll take AoE damage if if it's enraging. You'll take one character getting hit if it's in normal mode and it uses its burst. Now, for the triggers, it is two times random hits if it has no orbs, three times random hit if it has one orb, and AoE if it has two orbs. So it can do two casts of AoE per loop. Along with, if, worst case scenario, every character gets hit a, another time, if it ends up like that randomly. So, you could see, like, three cases of AoE damage entirely, if you're not lucky or careful. 
So buff removal might actually be helpful for that if you're you're not able to do it. But 850,000 HP is what you got to go through for that. Now for both Expert and Ragnarok. Expert is 7,200,000 HP and Ragnarok is 21 million HP. Just like the first fight, there's like only three orbs needed for the um the boss to use her burst. However, this is where things get pretty interesting. When she does a normal burst, it is two random hits. When she does a raging burst, it is AoE. And whenever her HP drops below 25%, she will randomly hit four times. Now, the special trigger will buff her, um, will give her a quote-unquote performance buff four times. Both bursts will only do it one time. What this does is make her normal attacks become spread, meaning it will hit everybody. And it also buffs their normal attack damage. So, that said, when she starts getting a lot of these, which is why they last 9 turns, but when she starts getting a lot of these, it can start really, really racking up damage, and it's going to be AoE. So, you're going to have to be very, very careful of that. If you're really struggling for this fight, buff removal is the key. That and some AoE damage cut if need be. So it's really AoE focused for basically all the fights. So get some AoE damage cut or get some AoE healing. AoE anything if you're not taking um, buff removal. And if you aren't able to um just immediately kill this boss, again, the longer the fight, the harder it's going to get. So you definitely want to try and burst down that HP if you have nothing else to do. Now, to get all the rewards, of course, 50 Divine, 50 Fat Devil to get just the basic SSR stuff. If you're getting all the gacha tickets, it is 140 Divine and 82 Devil. If you're getting both Dragonic Eye Shards, it is 200 Divine and 90 Devil. If you're getting all the Magic Jewels, 225 Divine and 95 Devil. If you're doing everything on the event list, 250 Divine and 100 Devil. So it's doable. It's very well doable. And naturally, you do need to get 3 million participation points if you're trying to um, get all the gacha tickets from that. Because there are raid gacha tickets for doing all that as well. Now, as for the weapons and the Adon, the Adon herself is very interesting. It is normal attack damage up when she's summoned. I do believe this counts as technical. So, that's an interesting little aspect. However, using her as a main Adon, she will give you 40% light elemental and she'll also increase your double attack probability. This makes her honestly one of the best Adons to really have for light. At least when it comes to the free event I don't want. So definitely worth getting, definitely worth keeping. In fact, just to make sure, I'm going to go into what this says. And this says normal attack damage up, so I don't necessarily know if it's going to be buffing the cap as well. But it is for one turn, so I'm expecting the cap to really get buffed or something. Either way, it only lasts for one turn, so I'm guessing it's a pretty strong buff. I will probably let you know about that when I'm um, in another video, because I'm going to actually use her to replace one of my add-ons anyways. Now, for the SSR light weapon, it is just large assault. However, keep this one thing in mind, that... Light weapons are getting few and far between now, so you may or may not need this. You can't do a very strong arcane grid if you're trying to use this weapon, though. Keep that in mind. But it does have a decent amount of attack power at um, 2200, a little bit over that. Almost 2300, in fact. Now then, the Fire Glaive. I would say to ignore this weapon however there have been a decent amount of fire glaives recently in fact we're about to get another one in the next event which should be the um phantom union event so that said this might actually be a decent placeholder for you 
It depends. However, it is only going to up Stinger, which is critical attacks, and the only good thing about that is the fact that it's in its own multiplier. So, Stinger is generally overlooked because of that, that reason. However, it's just the fact that it's still random if it even happens. So, it's not the best placeholder, but it can still get you the, the um, Glaive set up for fire if you actually have access to enough fire Glaives. So, that's a thought to, to keep out there as well. Now, I could say the same thing for this SR Axe which is Assault, and the SR Bow, which is Defender. Again, not the best skills, but they can indeed be placeholders because White has had access to quite a few axes and quite a few bows. So, if you're going for Phantom Grids, these SR weapons could be what you need to at least trigger the effect. I would not use more than one of them if you're doing that, though. As for the SSR weapon, that one you're going to want to... um use if you have nothing better. So keep that in mind. Yeah, Dolan, keep her. If you if you do not have a very solid uh, Dolan lineup, keep her. So there's that. Either way, you're still going to want to get her because of the fact that, of course, she can sell for Adolan orbs. You're getting the Adolans regardless. You really should. Now, as for the event missions, it's the same stuff. Three times you have to start your own raid, three times you have to jump into somebody else's, those can be done daily. If you're going after the raid gacha tickets, Arkami Hime only for expert, and you have to solo it. Water characters only, and that's has, that has to be sold on Ragnarok. Now, I will definitely try that. It will be a pretty interesting fight for that one because of how my water team is. But I will definitely try to do that. Now then, there is one more thing I have to go over because with every raid event, there is an SR Kamihime. And this one happens to be fire. Now going into what her kit is, she has something that says Allegro, which is basically her own special self buff. When she does that, she gets a little bit stronger. Now... The thing is, when she's in Allegro status, she deals a lot more damage. However, she consumes HP every single turn. Now, when she's in the Capo status, she'll recover that HP. And keep in mind that her second skill is what changes what what mode she's in. So she's got multiple modes basically. You can indeed stack that mode change in order to up her combo rate, so keep that in mind. She will she will give a good um a a good attack boost basically. And if she's in Allegro status she'll also boost um critical rate. And along with that she'll do some AoE fire damage, but quite frankly she's kind of niche because of the fact that she's SR, but if you do have room for her, she's not too bad. She really isn't, because she'll be a she'll be a rather decent buffer, and she can still do some AoE damage, so there's that. I can see some uses for her in Tower, which, interestingly enough, should be coming up pretty soon. Like, near the end of the year, we should be seeing Wind Tower, and guess who's got the advantage for that? Fire. So, you'll probably end up using her for that, if anything. But as for what the um, double attack probability is, or the triple attack probability, no idea. There's no info on this right here. But anyways, that's all for that. I may do a video on um, the Kamihime that gets released, because there should be Dark Kamihime. Speaking of... Neftis should have Awakening pretty soon, if not the same time in this event. When that happens, awaken her. She is very, very strong. She is a very strong Dark SSR when she's awakened. She's already, she's already pretty good when she's in normal state, but Awakening puts less restrictions on what she can do. So, there's that. But anyways, that's all for this.
more just going to come soon, of course, because new event, I always do recordings of the event at least, or at least try to. But that's all for now, guys. More of this will come soon. And like I said, if you do get into Genshin, do your research, please. In fact, even with this game, even with any game, do your research. You'll make your time a lot smoother if you just don't take whatever set at face value and actually use some logic. And maybe math if you're good at it. But anyways, that's all for now, guys. More should come soon, and take care.